Hey guys, I'm going to be doing one of those long YouTube reviews. You know, the ones that like tell you all the specifications and technical details and all the features of this Thunder Nova 51. So I'm just going to lull you to sleep with one of those long, boring reviews. Probably not. I don't like those. So let's do this rapid fire style. Alright, so let me just tell you what you guys came here to find out. You came here for a reason. You just want to know one thing. Is this thing good or is it a piece of crap? It's a good machine. It's actually great. So, review over. Awesome YouTube. Thanks for coming. Hit subscribe. I'm out of here. You wanted a little more, right? All right, fine. Let's get to it. So I got this machine about a year ago and honestly, zero issues. Okay, there was one issue. Just one. It was kind of a big deal. The water chiller power wasn't going on and I couldn't figure it out. So it wasn't having the best day. But anyways, I emailed support to their credit. They actually got back to me really fast. I think it was like two and a half minutes. So pretty quick. And turned out that power switch wasn't on. The power switch wasn't on. My fault. There's two switches. There's a laser switch, there's a water chiller switch. It's, it's a lot of responsibility. So, but other than that, zero issues. And I'm not perfect, so... This thing is built really well. It's got all heavy duty components, thick aluminum, and we all like our aluminum really thick. So, it's actually built like a tank. If there was like a catastrophe happening, I'd use this thing as my bomb shelter. It's great. The setup was super easy. The forklift came, dropped it into my garage, I rolled it into place, I hooked up the compressor, the chiller, the air compressor, plugged in my computer, plugged the machine in, pretty much fired it up and I was off to the races. So it was actually very simple. One of the things that this machine has that a lot of the others don't is an air assist panel. So basically you can adjust the airflow that comes through the nozzle. So if you get the right adjustment, you can actually get super clean cuts and engraves. I don't use masking at all. So as a lot of you guys know, I came from Glowforge. So this was my upgrade. So one of the very first things that I noticed that really impressed me was the, not just the cutting speed, but the engrave speed. It's just like a rocket. It's like lightning, thunder, lightning. Go hand in hand. It's really fast. I got three lenses with this bad boy. So I got this little guy here, and then I got this bigger guy here, and then I got this medium sized guy here with the bull head. So this is the one that came on the machine and it's the one I primarily use. It's a two inch head and it does all my cutting and all my engraving and I rarely use these other two, but these other two, they, I have no idea what they do. None, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I should have read the manual, I don't know. No, seriously though. This is the four inch head, it's for cutting thicker material. And this is a high definition engraving lens. So they've all got their uses, but this is the one I primarily use for everything. When I bought this machine, I had a choice. 100 watt lens or 130 watt lens. So obviously I went with the bigger one. That's bigger, better, Texas. That's the thing, right? I'm not in Texas, I'm Canadian. Anyways, 130 watts gave me more power, which enables me to cut faster, engrave faster, cleaner. So I went with the 130 watt. Like most of the razors, razors. What well, like most, of, like most of the razors, lasers. Like most of the lasers out there. This is like take four on this. I'm done. Like most of the lasers out there, this thing uses light burn, and light burn is actually super easy to use. I know a lot of you guys have come from Glowforge, or you're still using your Glowforge, just like me. So. You might be a little intimidated by moving and using Lightburn, but honestly, it was super easy to use. I do all my designing in Adobe Illustrator, but I import the artwork into Lightburn and just run. Pretty easy. Another thing you guys might appreciate is the really easily accessible port for the rotary tool. It just makes it so simple. Plug and play, away you go. I know a lot of the other machines don't have that, but this one does. And I'm gonna be doing a review on the Rotoboss upcoming soon, so stay tuned. All right, so it's not that big of a deal, and it's certainly not a deal breaker, but what's with the keys to unlock all the panels? No one's coming in here to steal all my little fall-through scraps. I don't get it. 
Just use a switch or a little handle or something. I don't get it, little keys. But it is what it is and it's certainly not a deal breaker. So I had the Thundercam installed. So that's the light burn camera, but I don't really use it. I prefer just to use the frame function in Lightburn, frame out where my art's gonna go on the board, and press start. It's pretty much how I do it. But somebody else might find the Lightburn camera to be really useful to them, so if you guys like it, let me know. Focusing this machine is a breeze. It's got autofocus, which works really well if your boards aren't warped. I tend to just manually focus it a lot as well. Um, the ideal height for focus is six millimeters. So Thunder actually provides you with a little uh, tool that is six millimeters deep and I can just drop the head onto that and I've got a perfect focus every time. It's easy. Being able to cut really big projects on this has been a great addition to my business. It's just really helped me offer my customers something more. So this thing is 51 inches wide by 35.4 high. So I get pretty big projects out of this. And also I can just put the pass-through doors down and fit a full 4x8 sheet right in there. So it's actually really cool. The entire machine has all smooth surfaces so that it makes it really easy to clean. And my wife really appreciates that. So, okay, fine. I clean it. Me. But makes it really easy. Now I do like my two glow forgers, but I'll tell you one thing. This thing's not cloud-based. So if the internet goes down, I'm still in business. And that's a huge plus for me. I have had jobs before that I was running and I had internet issues and I wasn't able to run them. So since getting this, that's no longer an issue. No cloud base, no internet required. That's a good thing. Overall, this thing has been an absolutely great machine for us. Being able to offer customers like bigger projects has just taken our business to the next level. We pretty much run this thing six to seven hours a day seven days a week sometimes and I've had zero issues in the almost year that I've owned it so it's just been great so if you have any other specific questions that you guys want to know about the Thunder Nova 51 or I also own the Thunder Nova 24 you can ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them or put you in contact with somebody who can that's it one more thing subscribe please I always forget to ask just subscribe